Good morning, everybody. Welcome to everyone who braved the ice this morning. Welcome to everybody joining us online this morning. Uh, Tim had to work today, so Jenny is uh, running the online solo this morning. So if it's taking a little bit longer for things to happen on there, that's because there's not two sets of hands back there. There's just one set of hands back there. Um, but thank you so much, Jenny, for running that for us today. Happy New Year. About half a day early. Uh, are there any announcements from the gathering? Okay, so a reminder that Church Board meets next week on Tuesday at 6.30 in the lounge, and that the annual meeting is after worship services on January 14th. Now, if you're someone who worships with us online and you would like to participate in the annual meeting, you must join the annual meeting via Zoom. You cannot join on Facebook because we will not be putting it on Facebook. It'll only be available on Zoom. If you need help getting on Zoom, um, please give me a call this week and I'll make sure that you can get uh, set up so you can be on Zoom for the annual meeting um, if you would like. So if you call me sometime before the annual meeting, if you need some help, I can help you. Um, obviously, I can't help you that morning because I'm leaving church that morning, so you have to call Make your plans in advance, call me a little bit in advance, and I will make sure that you can get on Zoom to participate if you would like to. Any other announcements? Then our worship service begins with our call to worship. I invite you to rise as you are able. Praise God in the heavens. Praise God among us. Praise the Holy One. Praise God who vindicates us. Praise God who sustains us. Praise God from the depths. Praise God in all circumstances. Praise Creator who made us. Praise God who shapes us. Let us all praise the name of the Holy One. The glory of God reigns in heaven and on earth. Praise the Holy One. You may be seated as we pray together. Redeeming God, you have met us in valleys, on storming seas, and on mountaintops. We welcome your presence now as we come to worship you. We gather in gratitude and assurance that you are our God, and we proclaim with gladness that we are your people. Some come in need of encouragement or comfort. Others need a healing touch. We hunger and thirst for righteousness as we praise and honor your name. Transform us to be living vessels of your love and living witnesses of your continuing presence in the world. Amen. We are still in the season of Christmas. Today is the seventh day of Christmas. Uh, if you pay any attention to Christmas songs, you know there's 12 days in Christmas. Christmas runs uh, from Christmas Day through uh, Epiphany. So we're in the seventh day of Christmas, so we're still singing Christmas hymns. Uh, 125, Angels We Have Heard on High.
The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us take a moment and share God's peace with one another. God's peace be with everybody here. God's peace be with everybody joining us online this morning. At this time, we're going to collect up our prayers for later on in the worship service. If you're joining us online and you have prayer concerns, you can type those first names only into the chat or the comments, and uh, we'll raise them up a little bit later in the service. If you watch the recording later in the week or you joined us late and don't get a chance to get those names in right on time, you can still put them in, chat or comments. I check it at the end of the week, and anybody that's listed at the end of the week, I will pray for. If you're here in the sanctuary, who and what are we praying for this day? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry to hear it. Okay, so for the family and friends of Heidi, and then a joy that Isaiah's starting to heal. So that's fantastic. Okay. Anything else? For Diane. For Jean and Gwen. For Jay, for Garland and Harold, all right, we'll raise those folks up a bit later on once we have all the prayers in from online as well. Let us pray now for God's intervention in our lives. Sovereign God, you have been our help from age to age. Remind us to turn to you when confronted with difficult choices. Remind us that you strengthen us on the journey. Remind us that our actions and attitudes impact our neighbors and ourselves. Renew our minds and spirits as we strive to follow your way of love and peace in the world. Amen. We take a moment now for silent confession, reflection, and prayer. Beloved, you are loved with an everlasting love by the Most High God. Know that each day is a new opportunity for faithful and flourishing life in the name and path of Jesus. Redemption is available, and God's grace is sufficient to, for transformation and for new life. Our first scripture reading for today comes from the writing of the prophet Isaiah. We're starting reading today in the 61st chapter, starting at verse 10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness 
as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. Our next hymn is number 126, Angels from the Realms of Glory. Our gospel reading comes from the writing of St. Luke. We're reading the second chapter, starting at the 22nd verse. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what was stated in the law of the Lord, 
a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Israel. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, Happy New Year, everyone. Has anybody made any big New Year's resolutions? Wow, we are an unmotivated bunch here this week. Oh, we just know that we don't manage our New Year's resolutions. Okay. Well, New Year, and every time that someone makes a New Year's resolution, is about trying to start something new, trying to make a change for the better in our lives. Now, some of us don't bother making them anymore because we know that we don't uh, manage them. Other people make them and then fail within a month or two. But some people do manage to make New Year's resolutions and keep them and make a positive change in their life. And when we do manage to make a positive change in our life, things around us change as well. Today, we're talking not so much about our own new things that we are doing to make a positive change in our lives, but the new thing that God is doing in this world. And through that new thing that God is doing, paying attention to what changes in the world around. So, at Christmas thousands of years ago, God decided to do a new thing. 
God decided to come and dwell with God's people as one of the people through the person of Jesus Christ. And because God did that new thing, everything around changed. Because God did that new thing, God's relationship with God's people changed. Because God did that new thing, God provided what was missing for God's people, which was the grace and the salvation which allowed God's people to live forgiven and redeemed lives. And today we hear the story of two witnesses to the new thing that God was doing. We hear the story of Simeon and of Anna, two prophets who have been waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem, who have been waiting for God to do something new. They've looked around their world, they found it to be lacking, and they've been praying that God would do something to bring about a different reality. And they've been waiting their whole lives for this. We get the sense, though it doesn't give us Simeon's age, we get the sense that he is possibly near death, as we hear that it had been revealed to him that he would not die before he saw the Lord's Messiah. We hear about Anna, who's at least 84 years old, though the way uh, it's phrased, she lived with her husband for 74 or seven years, and then for another 84 years as a widow, she could be even older than that. They've waited an entire lifetime, and they've been watching for God's action. And on this day, when Mary and Joseph bring baby Jesus to the temple to dedicate him to the Lord, on this day, their waiting and their watching is finally rewarded, and they see that God is doing a new thing in the earth. And Simeon sings about it, and that song has carried down through the ages, through the tradition, and is still used, uh, it's called the Nunc Dimittis, uh, still used as part of Christian worship to this day. Now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. We occasionally end our worship services that way because we know that we also have seen the new thing that God is doing. And Anna, we're told, begins to preach and proclaim to everyone who will listen the good news about what this child means for change in the world. Today, Anna and Simeon can become examples for us to imitate. Today, we are called like them to be watching and wondering and paying attention to what new thing God is going to do. Today, we are called like them to not be depressed and uh, 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 feeling let down by the current state of the world, but rather to be watching for what God is doing. And we are called, when we see it, to proclaim to the world the good news of Jesus Christ. And so for Christians today, we are called to watch, to wait, to notice the new thing that is happening, to notice where God is acting in the world, and when we see it, to proclaim. And how do we know? How do we know when God is acting in the world? When we see righteousness, 
when we see justice, when we see peace, and when we see hope, God is acting. Our Old Testament lesson from Isaiah tells us that God is springing forth new growth, and that growth looks like the robe of righteousness that covers us. It looks like the salvation that is offered to us. It looks like the peace and the hope that is given to all people. And so when the hungry are fed, we proclaim that God is doing something in this world. When the grieving are comforted, we proclaim that God is doing something in this world. When the homeless are housed, we proclaim that God is doing something in this world. When the addicted are set free, we proclaim that God is doing something in this world. When people are raised up out of difficulty, we proclaim that God is doing something in this world. And not only do we proclaim it, but we participate in it. And so we are called to watch, to wait, and to notice God's action, and then to be part of the new thing that God is doing. And so when we feed the hungry, God is doing something in this world. When we comfort the grieving, God is doing something in this world. When we house the homeless, when we help the addicted to be set free, when we bring about peace and hope and love, God is doing something in this world. We participate, and with Anna and Simeon, we proclaim. We proclaim, now, Lord, you may dismiss your servants in peace, for our eyes have indeed seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. Today we see the Lord's Messiah, and today seeing that Messiah changes our lives. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we proclaim, we sing one of the great Christmas hymns of proclamation, Go Tell It on the Mountain, number 154.
We pray now for God to do a new thing in lives of people who are suffering. Let us pray. Newborn Savior, we ask for your blessing upon our lives and upon the lives of those with whom we interact. We ask that you would help us to notice the things you are doing in this world and help us to participate and proclaim your goodness. We especially pray today, Lord, for those in need of your healing and your comfort. We raise up Diane, Jean and Gwen, Garland, Jay, and Harold, Peg, and Paul, and we pray for healing, we pray for hope, and we pray for strength. This day, Lord, we raise up those who are traveling, especially on the icy roads in Wisconsin. Keep them safe and bring our loved ones safely home from their holidays. We pray for those who are homeless in this weather, and we ask that you would help us to help all to find adequate food and shelter so that all might thrive with abundant life. And we pray this day, Lord, for those who have lost loved ones. We ask for your blessing, your comfort, and your reminder of eternal life to be with the family and friends of Heidi and to be with Gary and his family upon the death of his daughter. Help them to walk through the moments and days ahead. We also give you thanks today, Lord. We give you thanks for the healing that we see that you've brought to Isaiah, and we ask for continued healing, continued health, and continued hope in his life. All of these things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us rejoice in the God of our salvation through our giving. May we embody the generosity modeled by Jesus Christ, who came to serve to heal, and to restore. Today, as we collect our tithes and offerings, the offering plate is placed at the back of the sanctuary, and you may place offerings in as you leave. If you're joining us online and would like to support the ministry of this congregation, you can do so by mailing offerings to 887 Bunnell Avenue, Red Granite, Wisconsin, 5497. Zero. Even as those offerings make their way to us, we dedicate them back to God and to God's work. Generous God, we thank you for every good and perfect gift you have given to us and through us. Use our offerings this day for the benefit of creation, the redemption of humanity, and your glory. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 159, As With Gladness, Those of Old.
Please rise as you are able for our closing blessing. As we depart this place and this year, may we go forward vindicated, restored, and empowered in order to be the blessing needed in the world. Share the hope, peace, joy, and love of Christ in word and in deed to the glory of God. Amen.